All right. Hello, Mountain Lions. Welcome back to another episode of Lions Verse, a weekly podcast taking you inside the athletic department and giving you an opportunity to get to know some of your coaches as well as some of your fellow student athletes. I'm your host, Holly Stevenson, and with me today I have Mallory Corrigan and Heather O'Hearn from Lacrosse. Ladies, thank you so much for sitting down with me today. Yeah, no problem. So, um, first off, welcome back to the spring semester. Um, how has it been coming back to school and then being able to get on the field and play again? Yeah, Mallory, you go first? <laughs> yeah sure. It's felt great. Um, we got a little bit of time in the fall to play around and, you know, get our legs underneath us, but it's been really good to start playing games again and actually feel like a little bit more normal. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. How, has this year been more challenging to manage with like school schedules and practice schedules and everything? Yeah, in a way, um, just cause like things are a lot different now being online. And I think, um, just juggling like all the assignments that are coming up and, you know, some professors are putting more workload on us. Um, yeah. So sometimes, you know, with everything being online, you forget that you have some stuff and uh, lacrosse, like we have to be very careful um, with what we're doing because of COVID. So this semester is definitely, definitely interesting. Mm -hmm. um, but like at the same time, like we're learning a lot of life skills and problem solving skills with it being so challenging sometimes, right. uh, which is, you know, COVID is definitely negative, negatively impacted a lot of people. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you know, we're learning. It's a learning experience. Um, things happen. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Mallory, how's classes going and stuff for you then? Pretty good. Um, I don't have a full course load this semester just with uh, being my last semester. So that's right. been pretty nice. But yeah, lacrosse is definitely in full swing. It's that time of the season where you're just super sore, super tired, but got to push through. And yeah, it's kind of just focusing on staying healthy and staying out of trouble and making sure you can play in games. But yeah, class has been going really well. And I okay. we're both set to graduate here soon. So I'm very excited for that. Right. And I was um, actually just going to ask you guys about that. So um, last season, you guys kind of like ended very abruptly with only you guys playing like a handful of games. Um, so walk me through what your guys' thought process was when that happened. And then um, what was the mindset going into this season for, especially since this is your guys' senior year? Mm -hmm. It was, it was a, it was super sad when we got the news and we kind of knew it was coming, and thankfully we were one of actually the last games we played, um, like throughout the NCAA, which was awesome. But it definitely was a bummer, and it kind of lights more of a fire under you for this year, like um, just to do better and really make the most of it, because we didn't get our junior year season, and this is it. So yeah, definitely yeah. staying out of trouble, trying to keep ourselves healthy, and just you know live it up for the next four or five weeks and get everything we can in. Right, right, absolutely. Um, so, are with that being said, then do you, do you guys plan on using that fifth year that the NCAA has granted you? Um, I am not personally. Um, I had um, opportunities to play, take my fifth year in grad school, um, but I think that you know this is my last run. Like I've been playing since I was in sixth grade. Um, I love the sport like so much, like I, I don't know who I'd be if I never played. Um, so I definitely think that it will always still like be in my life, but I don't think the fifth year is going to be an option for me just cause like, you know, I'm tired. I'm ready to start my life. Like I'm ready to, you know, go to grad school and get my, uh, master's, like get my degree and then start like getting my feet in the water for uh, job experiences and stuff like that. So it's kind of like, this has come to an end. Um, I've like, had a really hard time coming to terms with it um because yeah. like you know it's my life I've never not played a sport before but um I just have to, like there's just this next chapter in my life that I have to start so mm -hmm. that's the plan for me I don't know um yeah Sounds yeah like ready for that same kind of plan for me I'm not taking my fifth year I um kind of already stretched my degree out as much as I could for a fourth year Mm -hmm. So I definitely think it's time for me to take the next steps too. And I'm, I'm really excited to get into my career and 
you know, moving to the next stage of lacrosse, which might be coaching, which might be on the business side. Um, but yeah, I think I'm excited. You know, my four years have been awesome. And I know a lot of people are taking a fifth year, which is awesome for them. It gave them an opportunity that they might not otherwise have with COVID. Uh, a lot of people get to take a fifth year and get to play again and, you know, go to grad school or, you know, finish their degree when before they were just going to only have the four years. So it's definitely been good for some people and, you know, good for them. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You you guys seem like you very much accepted um, your senior year and kind of um, and have it's, it's definitely you guys have definitely hit you. It's hit you that it's your senior year, but you guys sound like you're ready to kind of move on with the next steps of your life. So what uh, talk a little bit about that. What are you guys majoring in right now um, and what are your plans for the future then? So I am a psychology major and a biology minor. Mm -hmm. uh, my plan for grad school is to aim for neuroscience. Um, I had a little like uh, tug of war with what I like wanted to do. Like if I wanted to go to grad school, if I wanted to go to med school, um, I really like the idea of neurology um, and like radio radiology imaging, like all that kind of stuff. Um, so I plan to either um, do that um, and I really want to work in a, like a lab. Um, mm -hmm. There's this place in Boulder that my friend works at and it's a genetic oncology lab company um, and they take people right out of undergrad. So hopefully I'll be able to nail that job and do that. But yeah, I just Great. really want to do a job that helps people and help people recover and all that kind of stuff. That's very interesting. What got you into neurology then? So um, my dad, he had two strokes mm -hmm. uh, and that happened when I was a freshman in high school. So I, sorry if I get a little emotional, <laughs> but uh, my, I've seen my dad go through like a lot of stuff and um, he actually got hit by an 18 wheeler. So he um, had like a lot of brain hemorrhaging and stuff like that, that caused his strokes. So mm -hmm. just seeing everything that my dad went through um, and seeing like, I never want anyone to have to go through that. And I want to be able to like work in the medical field that can help those patients recover. Um, so Elon Musk is actually, he uh, started a comp company called Neuralink and it's about um, like in putting uh, brain implants in wow. um, that like move pathways around to help people recover from like stuff like that. So that's something that's really interesting to me that I would like to do um, just because I have a lot of experience of seeing like, you know, everything that my dad ha had to go through and stuff like that. So he really has been my inspiration for going into the medical field. Wow. No, that's amazing. That's uh, an incredible story. But yeah, it sounds like you can definitely do a lot of good for that. Yeah. That's great. Um, Mallory, what's what are your plans for the future then? Yeah, so I'm majoring in business with an emphasis in sport management and a minor in entrepreneurship. So I really want to get into, you know, the sport business world and Colorado Springs is the perfect place for it. Really so is. it's been amazing being in the program here and just the opportunities they've given us and the people we get to meet. So hopefully, you know, I'm definitely in the interview process and getting getting close there with some job offers. and. Ultimately, I'd love to work in the Olympic movement and stay around the spring, stay around Colorado. Um, also really like professional sports and definitely just love being on the backside of sports and kind of operational. And yeah, yeah, that's kind of where I'm shooting for. I definitely, you know, Colorado Springs can't get rid of me quite yet. So <laughs> Good. I'm shooting for jobs around here. But awesome. yeah. That's very exciting. Yeah, Colorado is actually the reason why I moved out to Colorado Springs is for all the sports jobs that seem to be out here. Mm -hmm. um, so so you mentioned you, you would like to be in the Olympic movement or in professional sports. Do you have um, anything in particular within either one of like within the department? Do you want to work on the operation side, um, on the philanthropy side? Um, do you have kind of any of those in mind? Yes, I'm very into operations. I had an internship with USA Hockey doing women's hockey operations and got to travel a bit for that. And that kind of would be ideal, especially working with hockey. Uh, that was kind of my passion growing up. And uh, But yeah, operational, helping 
the athletes directly or kind of facilitating all the stuff behind the scenes would definitely yeah, yeah. be my top choice. Very cool. Very cool. That's very in interesting. Um, so we're let's, switching back to lacrosse just for a second. Um, what, cause, um, Heather, you've mentioned that you've been playing lacrosse since you were six. Um, so what got you guys into playing lacrosse and, uh, when did you guys realize that you wanted to make this like your main focus for it as a sport growing up? Yeah. So I started in sixth grade. Um, I was playing field hockey at the time and I just really didn't like it, <laughs> but okay. I stuck with it until like through high school. Uh -huh. But I, so my best friend, um, I, when I moved to Pennsylvania, when I was four years old, their dad, um, he was coaching them for lacrosse and they kept trying to get me to play. And I was just like, I don't know, like, I don't know. So then huh. finally it came around and I'm like, you know, I, I, I want to play. So yeah. I went, uh, over to my best friend, Maddie and Danny's house and there I rode with them to practice and. I picked up a stick. My mom bought me a stick the night before and like all my goggles, like the goggles, the mouth guard and all that stuff. And I showed up and I just like was a natural at it. Like it was just yeah. so fun. I had so much fun learning. Like, yeah, you have your ups and downs like when you first start playing, but it was just so fun. So if it, if I never met Maddie, like right. in that, in the tear family, like I would have never played this sport ever. And it's just so funny how things work out like that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Did you find it more challenging to learn lacrosse having played field hockey for so long beforehand? Um, not, it, it, ground balls were <laughs> easier because I was so for used sure. to like playing on the ground, but actually like it wasn't that big of a challenge for me. Um, nice. I've always been like someone who's like really, who picks up things like really well and like learns things like quick, Um, I guess. So I knew like I wanted to start playing in college. Like yeah. I was uh, a freshman and mm -hmm. I started playing club in uh, seventh and eighth grade. And I was okay. a freshman and I got attached to an email that had my first college scout when I was a freshman in high school. And I was like, oh my God, this is insane. And my yeah. parents like, you know, they're like, I know you're young, but like, do you want to do this? And I was like, oh my gosh, yeah. Like who wouldn't want to play in college? So I just started, you know, working really hard, uh, like, I played every season, summer, like fall, mm -hmm. winter, spring, I played every season. Um, and I spent hours after practice, like, you know, hours on my own. And I was just like, you know, I'm really good at this. Like, why not play in college and, you know, yeah. get a scholarship for this. And, you know, I'm really, really grateful I did that because I've made so many friends, so, so many memories in college, like all that kind of stuff. And these are friends that I'm going to have forever. So it's yeah. just amazing. Well, that's awesome. That's great. And, and what's your story with lacrosse, Mallory? Yeah, so I um, grew up in Minnesota, so I I've played hockey since, like, birth, and uh, I also played tennis and softball, and my brother is a few years older and actually got interested in lacrosse, and Minnesota isn't quite big yet with lacrosse, especially at that time, and there was right. no programs to play for him, so my dad kind of took the initiative with some other dads around and actually started our city's program and with starting the boys, he also started the girls. And by the time I was in seventh grade and eligible to play in high school, it was like, hey, well, this is the first opportunity you get to play lacrosse. You want to try it out? And I always just kind of mimicked my brother and uh -huh. played with his stick and whatnot. So I just, yeah, I jumped in there and started playing in seventh grade on the high school team and, you know, kind of just fell in love with it. And also, yeah, I just realized that, you know, I'm not bad at this. This might uh, do something for me. And I'm right. in it a little bit more so got into the club scene and started uh -huh. traveling it a bit and becoming more serious about it and I still played the other sports alongside of it but lacrosse was always my favorite and it was the one I looked forward to the most uh -huh. so it was definitely kudos to my dad for taking the initiative and starting that up and then kudos to my brother for wanting to play too so I kind of just followed yeah. the steps that's amazing. That's great. So have you guys, um, or what was the biggest difference, I guess, from going from uh, clubs or high schools into like a college uh, atmosphere with lacrosse? Did you feel like there was a difference in competition level um, or did you feel like you were pretty much ready for, for what college had prepared for you? Um, I would say definitely it's, it's a big reality check. I think a lot of college athletes have that where you used to be the big fish in the small pond and it kind of shifts on you and you've got to adjust, adjust quickly. But 
coming from Minnesota where the level of play is much lower than Colorado or the East Coast or California, it was definitely a lot better lacrosse, which was super fun. And then getting some of that club experience, though, definitely helped open my eyes to some of that East Coast talent and right. better talent. But yeah, it was pretty easy to adjust. UCCS also made it really easy for us and our team is very welcoming. So yeah, that's good. That's awesome. Heather, do you feel the same way about that? Yeah, so I grew up on the East Coast where, like, it's a hot spot for lacrosse. It is, yeah. And it was intense. Like, you know, every, uh, like, summer tournament, like, fall tournament, like, you were playing people just as good as you were or even better than you were. Mm -hmm. And I actually, like, went to a high school where we were a club high school team. So we had other high schools that didn't have a lacrosse team and came. We had, like, four high schools that played in this club and um, it wasn't until my senior year that we became like an actual PIAA uh, team. So I was the only senior and I was the best one on the team. And any team like this isn't like bragging, but like I was like the best one on the team of any team I played. And then I came to college and it was like a huge culture shock. Like Mallory said, like you're like a little fish in a big pond. And it was just like insane yeah. like I was like oh my gosh everyone here is either just as good as me or better than me so that was definitely like interesting because I like grew up in a small town where yeah lacrosse was big but it was just like not as big as like the bigger cities on the east coast right. so it was definitely really really interesting for me to come to college and have to adjust to that and okay. uh push myself even harder so yeah 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 I'll say um so Speaking to, like, you both said that you uh, are from out of state. So what did the recruitment process look like for you guys? And then what made you choose um, Colorado Springs and UCCS? Um, for me, uh, I looked at a few schools, like in the Midwest and whatnot, and never really even pictured myself going further than the couple states around me. And, you know, got reached out to by Coach Hatton and, talked to my parents and was like why not let's just go visit to right. at the least I hear it's a really cool place and then got here and it was just game over like my parents could tell too just the look on my face and how I was reacting and getting yeah. you know you go to Garden of the Gods you go to Manitou it's just you're sold and then just stepping foot on the campus it's one of the most beautiful campuses in the nation for sure oh, so yeah. it was kind of a done deal as soon as I got here and um yeah, it was a pretty easy, pretty smooth recruiting process. It was my junior year of high school, which I committed before there was even a team, uh, right. before they even had their first season. Right. So I was just kind of going off of my instinct, and um, I loved the sport management program. That was definitely a huge selling point for me, too. It was a major that I didn't even know existed, and then as soon as I knew, it was like, that's what I want to do. I didn't know what I want to do before. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, it was, it was pretty simple. It's just, as soon as you get out here, you can just tell it's an amazing yeah. place. And yeah. Yeah. Is that, is that kind of the same, same thing that happened with you, Heather, then? Oh you, yeah. Yeah. I, I'm, like I said, I'm from like, <laughs> like Pennsylvania, you know, I actually like never even been to Colorado. I never really left the East coast before. Uh -huh. Um, and my brother actually moved out here for grad school. Okay. And I was getting recruited by all these schools in Pennsylvania, like top five, like the top five division two schools in PA. And I just like still right. was not interested. Like I was just like, I don't want to go here. The Pennsylvania, you know, is, it's pretty like miserable in the winter. Like it's like yeah. really gloomy and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And so my parents and I were like battling between like, you know, committing to uh, a school in PA. And I was just like, no, I, I just don't want to. And then my brother he was like, hey, like, do you want to come out and visit and see the school? They just got a lacrosse team. And I was like, oh, for sure. So I, I reached out to uh, Hatton and was like, hey, um, I'm really interested. Like, it looks really beautiful online. You know, I want to come out and visit. And she's like, yeah, like, send me some film, send her some film. And she's like, yeah, get your butt out here. Like, you know, <laughs> so I came out here and uh, it was it, we, they got the first snow of the uh, winter when I flew in. So uh -huh. it was like white out, couldn't see anything. Yeah. And yeah. So I went to bed and I woke up and I opened the back door to my brother's house and I saw the mountains and I literally called my mom right away and I said, this is going to be the place I land. Like, 
yeah. oh, haven't even seen the school yet and was just like, I love it here. Like I've never seen mountains like this before. It was, it was so insane. So then I went to campus and it was like, oh my gosh, it's so pretty. I was like, oh my, like, this is so amazing. Like school, there's n like nothing even compared to this, like where I'm from. So, and then, you know, I did my tour, I met Hatton and like met some of the team and I watched one of their games and I was just like, yep, this is it. I'm done. <laughs> like, I don't want to look at any yeah. other school. <laughs> right. That's cool. I mean, you guys make it sound like it was a very easy uh, recruiting process for you. So that's good. Mm -hmm. um, but I agree. Like um, I, I tell people all the time, it's like Colorado is like a black hole because even if you end up just driving through it or traveling through it, you always find yourself coming back to Colorado. Exactly. Um, and yeah, it's easy to see why. Like we live in a gorgeous state. Like I, we feel like we live in like a postcard or something. Yep. Yeah. I say a snow globe. <laughs> yeah, snow globe for sure. I agree. Um, okay, final question because I don't want to hold you guys too uh, too much longer. Um, so, what does your guys' game day routine look like if you have one, or um, what is your go to hype song before a game? Heather, you go first. You've got a good one. Oh, okay, so um, I wake up. I uh, straighten my hair every time. Uh, it's, I'm really superstitious, so okay. I'm, just, I'm weird. Okay, and then I go get Panera. Okay. Every every home game, I go and get Panera before, uh, and then I will come back. You know, get dressed. Um, I always have my headphones on. Like no matter if we're listening to music in, um, like the locker room or whatever, I'll I'll like have fun, like watch people dance and stuff like that. But I have like my own songs I like to listen to, and um, it's actually a song that I listen to when I max, like when I lift, and it's <laughs> Shook Me All Night Long by ACDC, and that is my go-to song. It gets me so riled up. I'm like, let's go, and I, um, like, I used to eat Twizzlers before every game, too, but that I kind of grew out of. That was a high school thing, but uh, yeah, it's just I have this certain routine I go through every single time. I listen to that song right before I take my headphones off, and then we're good to go. Awesome. Very cool. I like the song choice. <laughs> Thank you. I don't really have a set one. I kind of just wake up. I like to sleep in for sure. It's like one of the few days we get to sleep in usually. Right. Sleep in, get up, you know, kind of just relax, maybe do a little homework that day. Try to keep keep the energy low for a bit. Not low, but just relaxed. Yeah. Um, yeah. Usually we get to the locker room a little bit early. Uh, me and my roommates like to be like super early. So we're always kind of first and then just start jamming out with everyone. And we all kind of dance and have a good time in the locker room, get pumped up, uh, roll out, stretch, get whatever you need to do done. But definitely like just hang out with your team and like just dancing and singing and being dumb before the game gets everybody hyped up. Yep. Um, a uh, song for me, I really, really like listening to Drake uh, before a game. He just, he's yeah. got so many good songs, but Sicko Mode is like my walkout song too. We have like walkout songs. So Sicko yeah. Mode's a good pump up, but usually our locker room playlist is just a good pump up all around. So yeah, high beats, high energy. Oh yeah, it's a good time. Yeah, it's insane. <laughs> Well, good. Well, I want to thank you guys again for um, taking time out of your day to sit down and chat with me. It was great to get to know you. Um, and we're glad that, you know, lacrosse is playing again and wish you the best of luck for the rest of the season. You guys are doing great so far. Um, so Mountain Lions, this has been Lionsverse. Tune in next week for another episode. And until then, enjoy the rest of your week.